to all of you who had the idea to make that actually go in there and then pin it. Good on you. It was quite the oversight on my end. Otherwise, it would just be that little knob supporting all of the cranking of this reel. That'd be the weak link, you know? Not really acceptable. So yeah, that's gonna actually go in there. I'm gonna pin it in from the top. Today's the day that if this project, this fishing rail is gonna fail, it's today. But we're not gonna fail. We're gonna cut the gears. That's probably what this video is gonna be about, is making these gears and getting them to mesh and work well and rotate smoothly together. Each gear is gonna actually be on a bearing, nice and perpendicular to one another. I'm not concerned about that, I'm just concerned about getting these teeth to mesh really well at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna cut the brass out on the bandsaw, cut the wheel out, and then cut notches, and then get the 45 degree angle. Yeah, here I go trying to explain stuff again. We're gonna explain as we go. Let's go. Okay, I am coming to a humble realization that I don't really have tools appropriate to machine brass gears, and this could end up being dangerous. Not just not wearing your safety glasses dangerous, but like this could go flying off of a wood lathe and hurt me badly dangerous. Not so much with Lexan polycarbonate, and I have 1 8 inch thick Lexan polycarbonate sheets. That's a strong plastic. It's like what riot shields are made out of, or uh, headlights on cars, and you know, people like to say what Lexan polycarbonate's made out of because it's a fancy word and it's strong. Bulletproof glass, you know. It might be 100% suitable for this application and this wooden fishing reel to make the gears out of this instead of this. I suppose it was just I have you know big bright beautiful plans to get metalworking tools maybe a machining lathe like a benchtop one or a, a mill you know and be able to work with brass and make gears and uh, more intricate fishing reels for the future. I just kind of got ahead of myself. I can't expect myself to make brass gears right now. I'm gonna definitely use Lexan polycarbonate and uh, not get ahead of myself. It'll still be a cool reel. So that's how I'm going to keep the gear on the lathe. There's just a screw that comes up the back of this and squeezes it to this aluminum plate. Then I'm going to spin this on the wood lathe and cut it to the exact diameter it needs to be. Well, that's not going to work. It got off center really quick. I think I'll need to put some sort of bushing in there to keep it centered or drill a quarter inch hole and use a quarter inch bolt to hold. Yeah, I'll probably do that.
a little bit more. That's perfect. All right, I'll get that last little one done and get back to you guys. I'm making this little jig that's gonna hold the wheels so I can cut the teeth on the bandsaw at a 45 degree angle. Um, the last thing I need to do for this jig is to attach this. Came off of a, a little speed square. Well, it's not a speed square. A little six inch square. I'm actually just gonna glue it because this is a 45 degree angle to this. This'll be on the table of the bandsaw and I'm just gonna glue this jig to this 45 degree angle piece. Then I'll be able to cut every tooth at the same angle and just rotate it on this jig so everything's nice and consistent. I needed to make something that made this consistent and kind of took the human air out of the equation. Still might not work, so we're not in the clear yet. And I just ended up chiseling out uh, a bit of a mortise, or I don't, I'm not sure what you'd call that, for this to be set in so the glue up's a little more snug. Let that chill out for a bit. So now I can clearly see where I need to cut and this jig will be held at a perfect 45 degree angle. Pretty consistent. I'm pretty happy with that. There's some edges of these teeth where they look a little bit too round, but I can work on those with a file. The real test is how it meshes up with another one. I need to cut another one and see how it does. I guess by, just by holding them with my hands, I, I'll figure out something. I guess I could put them one this way and one the other way and they would mesh that way and I could see how the gears mesh. All right, I'm gonna cut another. Uh, I got this thing set up to where these two gears should touch, I measured, and uh, I haven't filed any edges or tried to clean these up at all. I'm just gonna see how they do. Not expecting much. Well, they churn one another. There's uh, some crunching and some resistance in spots, but uh, I don't know. It's about what you'd expect from gears cut just on a bandsaw. It'd be a lot smoother if these were on a bearing, which they will be. But I'm gonna file these edges 
all of these and try to get them smooth and come right back to here and see how they work. So I'm just sitting here rotating these two gears against each other and whenever I come to a, a little skip like that, it's, it's usually because there's not enough space between some teeth wherever it's skipping right there. So keep my finger on which one it is and I file that down and usually you can see it. It'll just look like it needs carved out a little bit more. I think this is just going to be a, a long process of that and I haven't even cut the small gear yet so I think this is going to be a super long process of just by hand filing these teeth how they need to be and uh, fitting these gears to one another. The pressure fit of this tube into this bearing is super tight. It might be enough to, uh, I don't even, I might not even need glue. I can pound it in with a hammer, but I can't push it in with my hands. So there's the main crank. Still have to glue this gear on. Well, actually, I still need to make this gear nice and file all the teeth. That's going to be a long process. So that is the main crankshaft on this bait, or on this <laughs> bait, on this fishing reel. It's gonna go right there. I think a super challenging thing that I'm gonna have to figure out for this reel is how to get these gears perfectly lined up and touching each other. This gear in the back here pretty much takes up all the space of the crankcase. This little gear is gonna have to go right up at the top there on this bearing. And then the main crank gear touches that. And then between uh, the main gear and this gear back here is going to be a mechanism that is connected to the wheel of this gear on the inside that oscillates the spool all the way up here. So as this rotates, it, it pulls and pushes a rod that moves the spool up and down. And that all has to line up perfectly. This might have been kind of a shorter video because these gears are just so meticulous and I'm gonna be making sure that they mesh smoothly for like a couple of days. It's already been a day and I'm still trying to get them smooth. So I'm gonna have that done by the time I start the next video. But that's a humongous step out of the way and I'm looking forward to putting this thing together, getting all these pieces assembled. All we did in this video is make these gears. That took a long time. I still am making the gears. It ended up being quite the process for me. So, on to more handmade wooden fishing reel stuff. <laughs>